are watching The Breakfast Show here with me, Lisa Wong, and the beautiful Aisha Sinclair. Now, we're talking about uh, this morning a uh, topic that I think a lot of us probably would have encountered it, uh, you know, in some parts of our lives, uh, probably now or before. Mm -hmm. uh, the appearance of lumps and bumps uh, on the surface of the skin, uh, diverse conditions that contribute to it. Um, you know, the more common ones are like cysts, moles, uh, also skin tags and mm -hmm. uh, other forms. So mm -hmm. we do have a doctor in the house uh, to speak further on this topic. Uh, good morning, Dr. Daniel Soma, consultant general surgeon from the Tropica, Tropicana Medical Center. Good morning, Doc. Thank good you so morning, much for sir. joining us on the show. You're welcome. Now, like Lisa mentioned earlier, there are a lot of types of uh, more common um, skin uh, lumps or inconsistencies you've mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. uh, cysts uh, mm -hmm. skin tags moles now are these merely um, you know aesthetic um, you know uh, complications or can they be slightly serious they can be serious actually uh, all lesions mm -hmm. whether on the skin or under the skin can be can be malignant so mm -hmm. malignant is the medical term for cancer so it can be cancer it can be non cancerous so any lesion is uh, uh, any growth is actually called tumor in uh, the medical term. Tumor is actually a general term. It doesn't mean cancer, but a lot of people think it is. Yes, it's, mm. so they, you say tumor, suddenly think, oh it's no. It's not actually. The, the medical term for any bump or lump or so bump. So it is could actually, be just a mole. So yeah? this would be considered a lesion. If it is elevated above the surface of the skin oh and it's right. as a protuberance, then mm. it's it's a tumor. It's right. a growth. It's a growth. Tumor is just basically a growth. So if it uh, has malignant potential, if it is a uh, cancer, then it's called malignant. If mm. it is not, then it's called benign. Mm, so benign, right. benign tumors are non-cancer growths. Non-cancerous. Yeah. Now, uh, we always notice these lumps and bumps. They usually appear, you know, as we age. Mm -hmm. yes. So is it a degenerative it's condition. one of the causes. One of the causes is degeneration, but there can be a lot of other causes for these bumps. It can, it can just be um, a coalescing or, or um, a collection of, of uh, skin cells mm -hmm. that just don't disseminate, they don't spread out. The, and the, the reason for that would be? It's, it's in the... It just happens. Yeah, it, it just, just happens. happens. It's, it's a biological process. Yes, okay. because our body is tuned to the cells are supposed to... They have their own duties they're supposed to do, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Okay. Right. Now, there are many types of um, skin conditions out mm -hmm. there, so let's talk a little bit about more, some of the more common ones. Mm -hmm. So, um, Doc, would you probably like to list in the order of um, not so, you know, severe to quite severe something that you might want to take uh, get a doctor to take a look at okay I mean there's a list you know you have, you have the list right mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically uh, skin cysts are very common mm -hmm. and uh, you have cherry angiomas angiomas uh, dermatofibromas mm -hmm. and epidermoid cysts folliculitis lipomas wow. those There's, are like obviously are. medical terms yes um, but we... I will go through them actually just more common ones I will uh -huh. go through like uh, lipoma lipoma is very common a lot of people present with a little lump in the in the skin it can happen anywhere in the body but uh, so common. a lipoma is just a, a small lump it's a small lump that is actually basically just um, condensed fat tissue Condensed fat, fat tissue. Yes. We have fat in subcutaneous fat everywhere right. in, uh, under our skin. Mm -hmm. right. But in some areas, the fat becomes condensed and it forms a lump. So is this uh, akin to what we call cholesterol deposits? No, no. that's different. Cholesterol that's different. Uh, deposits usually happen around the eyelid. Right. You know, you have little white um, islands or uh, yes. uh, raised plaques on the eyelid. Yes. That is. Um, uh, cholesterol deposits, which which actually uh, suggest that your cholesterol is high. Ah, so, so, so if you have it um, below and um, just above the and eyelids, around yeah. the eyelids, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a cause of concern. Yes, oh, so that's good. Cholesterol. It's, a, it's a telltale sign that something's yes, not yes. right. Yes, so you need to check. How yeah. do you remove that? I mean, if if, if it's an ecstatic purpose, mm. you know, and you say you know it doesn't make me look beautiful, so mm -hmm. how do you remove the? That? Actually, the best way with the minimum scar would be with laser. Actually, oh, laser treatment. Yeah, oh, but laser treatment. Yeah, but laser treatment is. Uh, uh, it's a series of treatment. You, you cannot just do it once. You have to do it uh, layer by layer, and it, there's, uh, there's sessions. What if you leave it uh, naturally? Um, say, you Can know, you, you attend to your cholesterol yes. checks and, mm -hmm. and you Would change your dietary and your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
Will that disappear over time? Not completely. Okay. Because okay? if it is once it has deposited, it's usually permanent. Right. But, mm -hmm. but you can prevent it from becoming worse by mm -hmm. controlling your cholesterol. I okay. see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, with actually a very long list of things mm -hmm. um, that you could have, yep. um, not being serious, some being quite serious. Mm -hmm. How would you know, or when would, should you decide that you know I need to see a doctor if something is you know not right? Okay, the telltale signs, okay, for, for superficial lesions, say, let's say, uh, take an example of melanoma. Okay. It's difficult to different from a mole because a uh, mole is just a, pigment, a pigmented area and uh, melanoma, same thing, pigment, but melanoma has malignant potential. Right, it can become cancer, or it can, it is it called a malignant melanoma? Now, a melanoma will be slightly raised as compared to a it, normal mole. These are the changes that you need to look out for. If it was not raised previously, and then it suddenly becomes raised, if the, the pigmentation becomes deeper, the change in color. Mm -hmm. Right, there's an A B C D to this actually. Mm -hmm. There's A B C D to E. Right. right. So there are a few things that you need to look out for. And for uh, example. For okay, being raised, change yep. in colour. That's where I have that actually. A is asymmetry. That means if the surface is uneven, so one side is raised and one side is not, this is a new change that was not there before. Uh, B is borders. If the borders are irregular, it's not just nice uh, rounded, you know, it starts becoming growing irregularly, spreading out. All right? right, it's growing bigger. C is the colour. It can become deeper pigmented or it can become lighter suddenly. Any sudden change. Changes that even subtle changes that were not there before is a telltale sign mm. that that, that if the, because uh, melanoma that was previously not malignant can become malignant. But also sometimes it releases. I don't know. I've seen um, just footages of mm -hmm. it releasing pus, or sometimes it can be blooded. That is if it's infected. Oh, uh, right. But usually it's not from melanoma. But if any skin lesion that's infected will present in that way, you have mm -hmm. all the signs of inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's red, uh, tender. Most most cancers are painless, mm -hmm. right? So that that is the sad thing about cancers. That's why people always present late. Yes, yes, you know? right. because people only go and see the doctor when there's pain. Yes. Oh, when there's pain, and then when it's pain, it's a bit too late. Yes, it's usually. Uh, if there is pain, that means it is yeah, it's because it is usually pressing on some nerve, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. Therefore it's surrounding wrong. nerve. Yeah. Now you just gave just then the A B C, and mm -hmm. you said there's two more D yep. and E. D and E is D is the diameter, mm -hmm. the growth. Therefore, it's growing. Um, yeah, because uh, melanoma more than one centimeter is almost sure of uh, malignancy. It's, it's, uh, okay. it's If it grows of, more than one, one yes, centimeter. Yes, the mm -hmm. diameter. Okay. Right? But anything more than uh, 0.5 centimeters is of concern. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And E, the, the final one? E final would be elevation. All right. So it it's slightly raised the surface, compared to the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, melanomas are, um, like the, the good doctors are talking about, is a, a raised um, marked skin that keeps on growing. And mm -hmm. it's actually caused by exposure, overexposure to sun, To right? sunlight, yes. To yes. sunlight, so um, that's why yeah. uh, SPF 50 is very <laughs> important. Did you say 15 or 50? 50. 50. 50. Five zero. Some people go like 100 plus. <laughs> SPF 300 if it exists. <laughs> that's where you can't see your face. That's where you see white patches on the face, right? That's Which is the called cream. staying indoors. <laughs> but but, but um, of course people with light skin are more yeah. susceptible. To right, cancer. so people who have darker skin uh, are uh, actually slightly made for covered. this, this uh, 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 sunny Malaysia. Tropical weather. <laughs> now, um, Doctor, I know that uh, also people who have moles, mm -hmm. right, sometimes would play with it. Mm. You know, they would touch it constantly mm. because, mm. you know, it's there. Mm -hmm. Or um, just kind of fidget with it. Yeah. Um, is it a cause for concern? I mean, can that change the characteristic of the mole, you know? Well, it has not been scientifically proven, mm. but uh, you, uh, the, the current belief is that a lot of cause for cancer mm -hmm. is constant or persistent irritation. Oh. So you irritate something long enough, it can turn cancerous. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. So everybody <laughs> with itchy fingers. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. But you know, keep them to yourself. Uh, that, that's something but I didn't know. Yeah. So you can actually. But because a lot of cancers too. are due to. Con Persistent irritation, just I like see. just gastric, playing gastric or even because. scratching it yeah. constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay, that's another common condition I I see. Um, it's called skin tags. Yeah. So yes. these are just well, how would excess, you describe it? This is just excess or overgrowth of skin in certain areas. Excess right. growth, and mm -hmm. they're very tiny, um, can soft be flesh. Quite big, where, where, where is it? Where are common places for you to get skin tags? Skin tags are usually at edges of uh, areas, right, like around the eyelid, um, the angle of the mouth, uh -huh. in areas where there's a corner. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And a uh, very common area is actually in the anal mm -hmm. verge. Anal verge as well, yeah. as, well as underarms. 
Uh, is yes. it caused because um, there's too much uh, friction? One of the causes is yeah, constant irritation. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, uh, tell us a little bit more about skin tags. Are they harmless or...? Generally, they are harmless. They're just excessive... Like, uh, once again, you know, if, if, if it's a, in an area which can actually cause a lot of friction or irritation, mm -hmm. there is a chance that this may become something to be more concerned yes, about too? Yes, yeah, but generally, uh, skin tags, uh, like in anal skin tags, the, the bigger concern would be bleeding because mm -hmm. a lot of them, a lot of people tend to get anal fissures at the area where the skin tag is. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they go hand in hand. So the, the main complaint would be actually bleeding and pain. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it can be a, a, a kind of mar to a, you know, yeah. appearance mm -hmm. for some people because I know yeah. some people as they age, they develop more skin tags around sure. mm -hmm. uh, you know, just mm -hmm. on the cheek area. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, is it safe to remove them, um, you know, when they go to any kind of cosmetic center? Well, if it's done properly under aseptic precautions and uh, I think it should be all right, but okay. it should be uh, done by a professional. Okay. Mm. And is it something that can go away on its own? Unlikely. Unlikely. Okay. But sometimes they do drop off. Mm -hmm. Like but my mom would tell me. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. drops off. It with, drops off after a while. Yeah, by itself. Um, by itself. Sure. After Maybe if if it has a very small peduncle, it's very peduncleated. It might by washing. You know. By you, 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 you. Because oh, okay. I know some people who actually would tie their skin tags yes, with a string it works. And, and cut off circulation. The blood circulation right? Does it work? Yes, it does. It falls off. It falls off. Oh, off. That's right. Very, very, very old school, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> self-administered. <laughs> Treatment. Yeah. yeah. But don't try it at home. Then, then I'll be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. Okay. But it works. It works. It works. Uh? Mm -hmm, All right. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That's quite interesting. And the other one um, is cis. Yes. says that you know sometimes you even I had it once uh, yeah. a long time ago mm -hmm. it's just at the wrist area and so mm -hmm. when you press it or mm -hmm. when you kind of put pressure to it mm -hmm. it hurts yep. you know so but, but after a while mm -hmm. it, it went away by itself so mm -hmm. you know that's that's good for you. yeah because the cyst is just actually a um, capsule with a fluid collection inside okay. it's usually fluid it can be other material mm -hmm. but um, it's it's a collection of fluid which can disseminate if on pressure or if the cyst ruptures, it, it flattens out. Okay, so a cyst would be something similar to a uh, a boil, for instance. A boil is an infective process. A cyst is actually uh, a lot of people have cysts in in their body, and a lot of times you don't even you're not aware, and it doesn't bother you. But uh, if it is a palpable lump mm -hmm. under the skin then you, you can actually get it treated. Mm -hmm. you oh, know, so you can leave it as it is if, if, if it's If there? you have confirmed that it's a simple cyst, usually we do an ultrasound. Okay. And if it's a simple cyst, then you can leave it alone. Right. Now, what would you see through the ultrasound? Though? You, would quite you would see a capsule mm -hmm. uh, with a fluid inside. And how that, that's if it were a simple cyst you mm -hmm. mentioned just then, if it were a lot more... If um, it were a complex cyst, then you have some solid material inside that is suggestive of something more sinister mm. so that would be recommended to actually excise or to remove so now like you mentioned just then a lot of people have cysts mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know and you don't even realize it yeah. so um, when do people start coming to see the doctor actually no because I'm, what I meant is that you can get cysts anywhere in the body you can have liver cysts you can have cysts so you can have them internally cysts. also yeah. so and some of these the cysts that you don't even see them because you go they through are life inside. not even knowing that you have it not unless you do a scan for something else mm -hmm. Right. And you pick it up, you know. So if it's asymptomatic, you can leave it alone. But if it does cause symptoms, like if it is under the skin, it's obvious, it's aesthetically not appealing. Mm -hmm. Or if it's causing pressure on surrounding tissue and causing pain. Mm. These are the common causes that people actually seek medical help. Actually. Mm. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. And then um, the treatment of a cyst would be um, through minor Ex surgery? You can actually excise the cyst with the sac. Or you can actually aspirate the fluid out. It will collapse. But the problem with that is sometimes it recurs. Mm -hmm. It recurs. It just, it just fills up again because the, the sac is still there, the, the capsule. So the permanent treatment would actually be to excise it with the capsule mm -hmm. uh, completely. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes it would regrow. It the, the the reason it regrows is it was not excised completely. Ah. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, sometimes you you do a partial excision, you leave some capsule behind, or you just aspirate the thing. It flattens, it disappears for a while, then it fills up again. Right. Has there been any research on why cysts develop? Is it because of poor dietary habits or lifestyle? Mm, no, I think it's just a tendency. It's I think little imperfections in your body. Mm. 
because our body, all the cells are, are, are snug, they fit. Mm -hmm. right? So if there is an area where there is a defect, mm -hmm. there will be some fluid collection in there, it walls off and forms a capsule. Okay. So mm -hmm. Now, okay. this can happen at any age? It can. It can happen to, at any age and to anybody. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Now, the other part, uh, lastly, would be fibroma. This is another common yes. uh, skin yep. Yep. disorder. It's yes. just a fibrous a collection of fibrous tissue that, that condenses and forms a, a mass. Uh -huh. All right. Yes, the so difference between a fibro fibroma and a fibroadenoma. Right. Fibroadenoma is if the gland in the skin is involved or in un under, the, under the skin. Involved. Okay. Right. We have lots of glands in our skin, right? Uh -huh, like yes, for for sweat, for uh, oil. Mm -hmm. It's a vicious glands. These mm -hmm. these actually keep your skin from cracking up. Mm -hmm. They produce oil. It's and it comes out through the, the side of the hair follicles. Uh, all the so pores. The we like pores. To call it, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So if that gets blocked due to dead cell. Uh, and wouldn't that be a pimple cells? then? Mm, a pimple would. Yeah. A pimple is if it's infected. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. I see. If the pores are blocked and uh, the, the, say the oil cannot come out and then it forms a growth, uh, growth there and that gets infected, that's a pimple. Right. The thing about skin growth is that sometimes you would see probably a, a, a kind of like a, a pustule forming, yeah. you know, or, yeah. or even like a pimple. Yeah. But because, uh, you know, sometimes we itch your fingers, you, mm. you, 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 you know, you... You do surgery, self-surgery. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah. self-administer. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, obviously it leaves some, sometimes scarring because of yeah. badly self-administered medical... <laughs> yes, <laughs> true. Uh, so over time but you see... Yeah, you can also make things worse, you know, right, because, you because you're, you're pitching it with your finger and your fingernails, there's lots of bacteria. Germs, yes. Yes. Yeah, so so, so they could might get uh, infected. You end up getting cellulitis. Okay, and then okay. Everything becomes a big problem. Right. All okay. right. So now, um, be skin uh, conditions, lumps and bumps, being very, uh, some are actually very common. So mm -hmm. I guess some of the things that you should look out for is uh, any abnormalities if it's ca causing any discomfort, mm -hmm. um, if it's growing or changing in color, especially moles, mm -hmm. uh, melanomas. If you're fair skinned, this is something that you might want to look out for um, because you know our skin is the biggest organ yes. in our body and it's the one that's most exposed to the sun and we do live in a very sunny. Um, you know, uh, climate. Yes. So uh, these are just simple things to look out for. Mm, and if they start getting in your way and interrupting your daily life, then may perhaps it's time to seek out some advice from the experts. Yeah. Yes, and we're talking about the experts. We'd like to thank ours, uh, uh, Dr. Mohammed Daniel. Thank you so much for being on the show Welcome, my and um, answering. So if you could just wait a little bit, we're going to go to a commercial break, okay. and then we'll be back. Anyway, thank you so much again, you, um, Doc, for being on the show. Hopefully you've uh, had a lot of your questions answered uh, when it comes to lumps and bumps. Yes, some of them are unsightly, some of mm -hmm. them are actually uh, something to be concerned about. Anyway, we're going to take another quick break here on The Breakfast Show, but don't go anywhere because coming up next, what do we have, Lisa? Ooh, check this out. This is the talk on beauty for a beautiful cause, a charity drive, so don't go anywhere.